What do you want, Adam? I feel awake when my eyes are open. Maggie Seawater, The Dream Thieves. The Great Reading Slump is an event that had its start in 2013. The potential causes are many and argued among historians, but its end is unanimously agreed to have been The Raven Boys by Maggie Seawater in 2018. I picked this book out for the first time, intend on writing a book report on it, and like all other books I wrote an analysis of for school, I was never planning on actually finishing it. All I was going to do was skim through, enough so that I understood the overall message of the book and the characters. It was not like my teachers were going to read the book too just to check that I was telling the truth anyways. But then I opened the book, and I read the first few chapters. Before that day, I didn't believe in love at first sight, but then I met Richard Campbell Gansey III, obnoxious, troubled, and condescending Gansey. It wasn't a romantic kind of love, but a love that came from understanding. Despite being opposite in many ways, our upbringing, financial status, and gender, I read about his longing for something more and wanting to know all he could, and I understood what drove him. More importantly, I understood myself better. Then there was Adam Parrish, longing to find his place in the world, sullen and lonesome, someone who wants to believe in your hunt yet is far too logical to give his entire heart to the idea. Being someone who loves escaping to different worlds through reading, yet can't get myself to believe in magic anymore, I empathize with that tiny part of him. I saw a part of myself in blue, who never fit in with the rest of the people around her. She's an observer great talent, but lacks the talent herself. She's a silent bystander, a spectator, just like I've always been. And Noah, sweet and awkward Noah, who is quiet and drawn back with his quirks and oddities, yet accepted by those around him. But he is more than he seems at first. We both are. And lastly, Ronan, who holds so much anger within him, which makes him put on a tough face. If I'd had his confidence, my high school face of hating the world might have led to some real mistakes. Thank the gods for anxiety, I suppose. It's funny, really. Each of these characters has something in them that I can relate to, in a way I never have with another book. When looking at the characters in this book that was meant to be just another way to earn a good grade, I can analyze myself through them and find some clarity. Now, four years later, The Raven Boys is still my all-time favorite book. Even though I might have liked Blue Lily, Lily Blue better in the series, and read other books I enjoyed more, but it's the feeling attached to this book that means it can never truly leave the first place spot. Because every time I read it, every time I think of it, I refine that sense of magic I lost as I grew older. But it isn't a wand-wielding, troll-infested forest kind of magic. It is magic as a feeling, a sense of joy that is so great that it feels like sadness. That inner calm which is so fleeting nowadays. It is staring up my skylight at the stars, the cold wind on my face, the universe laid out before me, a feeling of sorrow in my heart. It is walking outside in the early hours of the day, the streets quiet, the only sign of modern life, a distant red light on top of the mountains. It's late night, car drives on an empty road, the world outside so dark that your face appears among the trees in the surrounding forest as you look out the wind. It's magic in the mundane. If you never saw the stars, the candles were enough, is one of my favorite lines from the first book. And by reading this series, I saw those stars. And I keep seeing them, because it brought me back into reading, and, in a sense, made me write again. At the end of my presentation, my teacher asked, How has this book inspired you? Without thinking, I answered, It made me want to write a book that would make someone else feel the way I felt while reading it. And in the end, that's what makes me want to be an author more than anything. The chance of someone else reading my work and finding the stars in them. There is nothing quite as powerful as giving that feeling to someone. And I can never thank Maggie Stevewater enough for giving that to me. I wish I could explain it better. 
but with my love for this book and the rest of the series, this is the best I can do. So, for now, that's all there is.